In our last show, we started our tour of the Belize Zoo. We continue our walk through with Director Sel Saput, Conservation Program Manager Jamal Andrew Bone, and General Curator Umberto Wallers. We will have that for you after we hear from our partners. Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust, the Barry, Shell Belize, and the National Gas Company. <laughs> The National Gas Company Limited was born of the need for the country of Belize to have a marine gas terminal of its own, thereby securing supplies of critical cooking gas for a growing population. As Belize's population grew, the time came for a modern marine gas terminal that ensured safety, security of supply, and the requisite infrastructure for industry-accepted quality assurance now demanded by the people of Belize. In 2020, the National Gas Company Limited became a reality. The National Gas Company Limited is a $60 million public-private partnership where Belize's private sector would design, finance, construct and manage a state-of-the-art national marine terminal facility and two complementary storage depots away from the coast. After 15 years, the National Gas Company would be fully turned over to the country and people of Belize at no cost to the taxpayer. The National Gas Company of Belize, fueling Belize forward. We are the Barry, offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Belmapan, San Ignacio Cayo, or York, and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita. The Barry. Get more? Pieles. Since 2008, the Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust has created opportunities for Belizeans to develop themselves and their communities. The Trust employs tools that are intuitive, collaborative, and accessible so that every Belizean is empowered to achieve their full potential. Over 200,000 Belizeans have been impacted because of our various initiatives. The Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust, empowering Belizeans of today to create the Belize of tomorrow. Shell V-Power, with three times more cleaning and friction-reducing molecules. Go well, go Shell! The sign says, welcome to the Belize Zoo, Zoo Entrance. Right, Celso? And Celso is a man here at the zoo. Celso, you, 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 we did a we did very enjoyable tour the other day with you. This is the second part of our tour. Um, but I'm wondering if I did introduce you as what do you do at the zoo. Thanks, Chief, and thanks for coming back. We, we actually are glad to have you back. Um, I'm the director for the Belize Zoo and Tropical Education Center. So most people... Think about the zoo, but there's the other arm. There's a tropical education center where we host school groups with, with staying with the Belize Zoo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one day I'd like to come and look at that tropical education center behind the scenes and what have you. So, so, so once again, thank you. And um, let's continue our tour of the Belize Zoo. Sure, Chief. Let's continue. All right. So, so, so we, this is your snake exhibit, right? Um, it's uh, right at the entrance of the, of, of the zoo. Um, let's run through it quickly before we advance. Yeah, so we have three species of snakes 
here on exhibit. Um, we have the Tamigaf, as most people know it, the further lands, with the common name. We have the tropical rat snake over here. But let's look at the, the, the further lands. The further lands is the one that will be on the, on the, on the leaves and, and that sort of thing, and you walk, you walk on it, and he jumps at you, right? Well, he will jump at you if he's frightened or if he's scared. Um, it's, it's a defense, it's a defense uh, mechanism, a defense response. I mean, he not just and jump at you because um, he, uh, for, for jump sake, no, he's basically defending himself, defending okay. his territory. And so most of the time, because they're so camouflage, you don't see them and then you step on them and then he just respond with a strike. Okay, so the further lance is a poisonous snake. Okay, so it's a venomous snake. So one of the tricks I like to teach with, with students to differentiate between venom and poison. So poison, you ingest it. Venom, you inject it. Inject it. Right, so the so snake inject the venom and the poison, that's something you want, you want to eat. You know, okay. Right, so snakes are venomous. Okay. Um, and so that, that, that is one way how I like to tell students to differentiate it, no? Okay, and this one here is... This one that is a tropical rat snake and... You got some beautiful in, yellow in, stripes in, on in, here, no? In a Belize, we call this the Bocotora clapansaya. Uh -huh. so basically, the one rat eater, eat rat, the no poisonous? venom, no venom. No venom, no, no venom at all. Okay. So. And what hit with kids is the boa constrictor. This is uh, this, this, this is the Balboa, the boa constrictor. So most people know it that believes as the Wola. Uh -huh, Wola. This is the Wola right here. Uh, basically another non-venomous and uh, get it prey by, by constricting them, no? suffocating them. These basically. will be related to the big snakes you see in the Amazon and that, that sort of thing, won't uh, it? These are different. You did talk about the anaconda and anaconda if you go to Asia. Are related? The no, 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 no. These, these are the boa constrictors. Yeah. Okay, so no related no way. Pass on up. All right. Boa constrictor, waula. We right. don't have that big stick like what you've seen on the thing, you know. No, no. I mean, the, the, the boa can get as big as 12, 12 feet. I would say average would be the larger boas that you'll find in Belize. And, it, and it's constricted. Spray, right? right. So it. So, so con contrary to what a lot of people say is that it broke up your bone, the boa constrictor not really do that. What it, it constricts you, so basically it wrap itself around you and, and then you, <gasps> and then it wrap again and then you, <gasps> until it suffocates you and, and you're gone. Yeah, yeah so that's that how you really get the prey of them. No? Yeah. yeah. No, no, yeah. You don't have venom like the other ones. No, no, and then you swallow the prey whole, uh -huh. right? And so then after that, it just stay there and, and, and the, 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 the acidity, the acids in our digestive system just digest whatever you eat. No? So normally when, when a boa constrictor just eat, you could basically do it anything because it's just focusing on digesting. It, it can't do anything. Yeah. yeah. Right, okay. So, so, so let's, yeah, right. yeah. So Chief, we're going outside in at the zoo now. So let, let's go outside and start the zoo tour. Okay. Sure, man. Looking forward to that. Ocelot. Ocelot. We, we have five species of cats, mm -hmm. um, jaguar, puma, ocelot, margay, and jaguarundis. Mm -hmm. um, and this one here is the ocelot. Okay. It's, it's a small cat, right? It's a small cat. Um, a mature one would be like maybe 27 pounds at okay. the max. Well, much, much bigger, like twice the size? or? No, no, I mean, this, this, is, this, is, this would be a size of an ocelot. Oh, this it's is the size of an ocelot. It's okay. not going to grow anymore. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is Rayburn. I want to introduce you to Rayburn. And Rayburn was rescued from a village called Rayburn Ridge. Okay. After a flood, I think, um, the guys out there went out and they found this little kitty, no? Mm. And no more than a pound brought to the zoo. And um, one of the good things is with this is that we have this, um, this ability to raise um, cats you know, um, find the, the right diet, the right milk. Yeah, so Raven was brought here like maybe a few weeks old. Uh -huh. Yeah, and so we, we had the, the opportunity to raise him. And, um, but he likes to be, as a male, he likes to be alone here, alone. alone. Yeah, so. What yeah. is he? He's hungry, no? Yeah, he's, he's hungry. He's, 
many of our animals. They're angry, see? He's, uh, he's angry to they, see us. They like attention, and they know that once they see us with a little bucket, they, they're, they're, there's they're, some, food some food coming. Yeah, yeah. So there's always a, like a positive thing for them. He said, what Aaron wrote here, he said, we ocelots are lucky because you humans have made it illegal to hunt us for our fur. It takes a hundred cats like me to make a coat. Is that the way to treat your natural heritage? Thanks for giving us a future in the wild. You may think that I sound angry, but the truth you need to know, that's just the way we ocelots greet and say hello. So he's oh, so he's greeting. actually saying hello. hello Sure. Yeah. So if you hang a meat up there, you can go for he it. You can go for can it. You, yes. Can you remember they have that ability to climb. They they are both arboreal and. and but I, what it come. Wow. So so in the wild they would go for birds, mm -hmm. snakes, rodents like the, the the agouti that we saw in the mm -hmm. by the deer. Mm -hmm. That that's part of their diet. Yeah. So we have other ones. Yeah, well, uh, other, other, other ocelots? Yes, more, more ocelots. Uh, more ocelots, okay. Let's go down the side and look and at again, them. Again, these ones were rescued chief. Mm -hmm. um, one from Pomona, and that's how he got the name. Mm -hmm. He's uh, in Pomona? Pomona. Okay, Pomona. And, and Fifi. Fifi, that's yeah. strong like the hurricane. Like Hurricane Fifi. Yeah. Yeah, so, so both um, had reared because, you know, as, as babies, they, yeah. they, they need to get their um, adequate uh, nutrients. Okay. There you go. You can identify them, no? Yeah. Taking photographs and all that. Um, I don't know if Jamal wants to chip in into. Um, yeah. No, so uh, another. I don't know if you mentioned this, Berto, with the fur, with the fur trade. Did you? No, okay. So we, you know, we find the the coats very beautiful, and we talk about how unique the patterns are. Uh -huh. um, a while back, though, this was one of their disadvantages. So. Jaguars and ocelots in particular used to be hunted extensively for the fur trade, for fashion, right? They used to sh export them to the U.S. and to Europe for make fur coat for humans. So at one point, ocelots and jaguars were, you know, on the brink of extinction. Yep. But now we have, you know, there's the Wildlife Protection Act in place and a lot of um, restrictions on, on trade of wildlife internationally. These animals have managed to come back. But yeah, back in the day, this was the rave. Everybody knew an ocelot coat. Ocelot coat. I yeah. can remember those old days, indeed, when before people are aware. Yes. Uh, you know, you, the, the fur coat and the yes, that was and that was the status symbol, and no? Status symbol. And depending on who you talk to, I mean, you know, you would hear estimates of you need 50 to sometimes the extreme would be up to 100, so 100 ocelots to make one fur coat, no? So it was a very, very um, exploitative industry. So these guys were no, they're, there's no, they're okay. They're not like doing fantastic, but they're doing much better than they were. So there's still a, a species that you can encounter in the wild. Mm -hmm. Actually, this one is one of the ones that lives here in the in the corridor as well. The zoo is in the middle of a, a wildlife corridor, so we've recorded jaguar, tapir, ocelot living on our properties in the wild, just using the trails and doing their own thing. So they do move across these kinds of um, landscape in Belize. Were you moving around as a human being in their domain? Would they attack you? No, to to date, there's there's never been, to our knowledge, any record of um, ocelot or even in Belize, even a jaguar, a wild jaguar attacking a human. They can detect us well before we detect them. They smell, they hear different things, and anything that is foreign to them is unusual. They avoid as long as there's no history of them being fed by humans. They, av they avoid people. So that's why you could go to like Coxcomb and these areas that boast they have a high concentration of jaguar and ocelot and you might never see one because they get away from you well before you um, come across their path. No? So yeah, they just they stick to themselves if they're given the space and there's no competition. But yeah, yeah, I remember someone told me, if you ever come across a jaguar while you're doing a show, don't run, just turn up and stare him. Don't run. <laughs> we've heard, yeah, um, we've heard different recommendations on what to do uh, my favorite one is we had a colleague um, that was doing some studies out in the wild and he was bent over down low I think setting up a camera trap and he turned around and there's a, a small look like a, maybe a female jaguar in the path looking at him and he said all he had on him was a bright yellow umbrella and so he see the jaguar kind of curiously watching and slowly like slowly making a way maybe to investigate more so he didn't notice, so he swung around and popped open the yellow umbrella and that apparently startled the jaguar and she walked off the trail and went. Yeah. So 
we've heard stand your ground. We've heard, you know, again, make unusual sights and sounds. Anything that is alien or foreign to them will give them pause. So that, that's the... So there are more stories I always have a yellow umbrella on you in the wild. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm also told that, 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 that they prey on cattle and, and, and what the jaguars particularly, mm -hmm. and that you, when you have your cattle, you should maybe put a donkey there because the donkey does not move, uh, you know? Mm -hmm. And so he watches the donkey with curiosity and forgets about what he came for, which is where to go with, the, mm -hmm. with, with your cattle. There's, yeah, and when we, you will meet some um, reformed cattle killers when we get to the jaguar, but uh, for predators across the world, people use what you call non-lethal deterrence, right? They use light, electric fence, donkey, bell. They use stuff that will disrupt the, the, the hunter, the, the animal that's hunting their, their focus, like you say, right? And that's usually enough to, to um, have them move off or avoid hunting in that area so they don't become dependent on the animal, so, yep. Okay, so Jamal, moving away from the ocelots, we're going to... The howler monkeys. Howler monkey. So we've now, we've met the spider monkeys, now we're going to introduce you to the second species of monkey that's native to Belize, the that's howlers. That's the one we call baboon. Correct. Mm -hmm. right. That's the one that are known at the um, community baboon sanctuary, so we'll oh. go see them today. Okay, let's mm -hmm. go. It says, please do not howl at us, it causes us a lot of stress. So the howler monkey. Yeah. Okay, well, tell me about this ho the howler monkey. So now we, ha we have the howlers there, I think a bit more well known or more often seen in Belize than the spider monkey because as we know we have places like Community Baboon Sanctuary in the Belize River Valley. We have, mm -hmm. when you go to some of the Maya temples, you see them nearby. So a lot of Belizeans are familiar with what we call baboon, no? Mm -hmm. um, so these guys are, they tend to be more uh, are less energetic than spider monkeys. They're more known for their voice than their antics, their behavior. They're one of the loudest animals in the world. Their voice can carry literally three, four miles on a, on a, on a quiet day through the, the landscape. Now these guys are, again, they're on the, f the ground because we just put in some food for them, but usually they'll stay up in the trees where they're most adaptable, right? And what do they eat? Rough? They eat, uh, the biggest portion of their diet is leaves. So they have a, a much more um, leaf-based diet than like spider monkeys and others that eat more fruit and more nutrient or protein rich foods mm -hmm. which probably adds to why they're less energetic right they're the young ones are the exception but as they get older they start resting more so leaves a lot of leaves you notice they eat <laughs> <laughs> the leaf one they try if you yeah, go don't forget, don't forget down so they spend a big part of the day eating and then just digesting and so um <laughs> <What's cute? laughs> how do i get down there how do I get down there? It's a learning curve. You learning it curve, out. yeah. yeah. That's a learning curve yeah. right there. Yep. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you grab your one thing, I eat it though. That's right. And so the hole that they're known for is produced by the males. So the, the males are the ones with the big throat pouch and they have a hollow bone in there that they, when they force air through it, it it's like a resonating am uh, amplifier that produces that hole that everybody knows, right? And, and that the male will be, will be bigger than, than the female, yes. right? This would be a male this here. Is a, exactly. This would be a male, male here. So big, big throat, that's a good indicator that it's one of the males. So the males in the troop will be the ones that, that um, sound the alarm, and they do it for several reasons. They do it usually morning and evening to establish their territory, so it's to remind other troops this is my yard. Mm -hmm. But um, anything that threatens them, so, you know, if a predator comes by or a rival troop, they will howl to basically try to scare the animal away, to raise the alarm, um, and to protect their young ones. So it's a stress response, and that's why we have up this, these signs around the zoo that we ask, we discourage visitors from trying to get them to haul for, for entertainment, right? Because it's not them saying hello, it's them telling you to go away. Yeah. So it's a, it's, it's a, and you could do, you look at their body language, they get really aggressive and they lunge when they're howling. Mm -hmm. So um, we they do it when they need to, but we don't we don't get them we don't get them riled up because it's it's, a, it's it's stressful on them, no. So they're peaceful right now. Yes. Uh, and yeah. so you w you won't get the holes. No, usually like in the evening you'll hear you'll start hearing, or if even sometimes when it start rain, if they feel um, uncomfortable or dis disturbed, they'll they'll howl. They just they're always complaining basically. But they're pretty much seen all over Belize, right? Yes, yeah, they are they are endangered, but thankfully, due to efforts like um, Community Baboon Sanctuary, and there's been uh, wildlife centers that have put them back in the wild. The haulers, I would say, are doing a little bit better than spider monkeys in Belize. You're, you're more likely to see them in the wild than you would um, spider monkeys, no? 
No, which is the spray is more intelligent, the howler or the spider monkey? Spider. Spider. <laughs> no offense to these guys, but no spider monkeys spider. are, are okay, yeah, they and this is by people that study them, primatologists have yeah. have um, shared with us that spider monkeys definitely have more more they have more processing going on than, than howlers. Yeah. yeah. You could you could see them and uh, uh, even in their behavior, even mm -hmm. visiting here you they hold the spider behave walking yes. straight and everything yeah. you can see that maybe he processes things in a different way Correct. than the howlers exactly. and maybe in a more efficient way yeah and even just like we mentioned back with the spiders the way spider monkeys recognize and interact with just the public they watch they follow you um yeah they, they're more aware i think and more bold in in interacting with animals outside their troop than than howler monkeys well what about sickness what would be a common illness that would maybe affect these monkeys so they can get uh, tuberculosis, so TB is a big one. Um, and usually when we get a new intake, the, the animal care team have to quarantine them and test them for TB. So it, you know, it doesn't transmit not only to the other monkeys, but to our staff as well. It's one of those- can transmit the disease to correct. human beings So as this well. is one of those zoonotic disease we talk about when we advise people, don't mess with monkeys in the wild, don't have them as pets because they do have stuff that can transfer. Um, other diseases, I, I don't know what else, we are major ones we look out for. Right. So parasites, yep. So you have to, you know, you have to. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yellow fever was the big one back in the day, you know, in the in the fifties. So that that and the pet trade um, together, you know, really de cause a decline in in the monkeys, the monkey populations that we have in Belize. And they also have a hierarchy, right? Because the the, the big male would would be the one who would control this area, apparently. Con you know. Correct. Yeah, they'll the have. Others would steal a little bit and run. Yes, you'll have some more dominant uh, males. You might have some younger ones in the group, but you often you can some you see as well, um, like up and coming males getting going off on their own. So they they maybe get forced out of the group, or they just branch out to start their own group. So you might see them roaming in the forest without a, a, a troop along with them, right? So yeah, there's definitely a social structure with, with um, the monkeys, especially the howlers. Mm -hmm. Where are we going now? Let's go to the puma, we'll do another wild cat. Okay, we're going to do another wild cat. You're, to, you're telling me the puma? Yes. Belize has a healthy population of pumas, right? It does, they're, they're actually, and, and as far as just the species there, the mammal with the biggest range in the western hemisphere you get them from canada all the way down to almost to the tip of chile so okay. every almost every country in our hemisphere has puma even if they call it by a different name cougar mountain lion red tiger red tiger exactly yeah same animal just different size <laughs> uh -huh. but uh, the, our size how would our size compare with the sizes in the neighbor the other countries so ours are small we we have small pumas. yeah um, especially people from north america they always remark at how much like they're almost sometimes half the size of the ones they would encounter in like California and other and in Montana and those areas. So ours are, are oh, much smaller. Mm -hmm. This is princess or princess? Princess. princess. Okay. Yeah. Wake up, princess. <laughs> she can nap. Burton, I think. So what do you in? So this is a small version of the puma. I don't know if it's a big one. <laughs> and the females. This is, this is a female puma. There are smaller even than than the males that we have so then we will get some okay. treats and see if she comes over yep so th this one is um not asleep like the other one and what's the name of this one i guess he's just active he never had enough food last night so he's, he's waiting for while he treat and the name is this is a uh, freddy freddy cougar freddy cougar yeah because one of the names they give them is you know we got from cougar, puma, mountain lion, in Belize we're calling it red tiger. Uh -huh. So this is one of the cats with, with all the names. But b basically, you're saying that these are smaller compared to their Central American um, counterparts or North American counterparts. Mm -hmm. in, how, how about the South American puma? Is it smaller than this? Uh, bigger. So it's so bigger too. There's a rule. Why or why, a, why 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 our region is is, is sm smaller than the normal? There's um there's a theory in in biology called the Bergman's rule that uh -huh. states that most mammals, as you move further away from the equator, they get bigger. So that's uh -huh. why the white-tailed deer bigger in the north. The Puma's bigger in the north and the south. Jaguar's bigger in the south than in Central America. And for the predators, it's part of it is you know more space, uh, bigger prey, as well. Mm -hmm. And um, in you know the, 
there's a, a trade-off with, with um, retaining body heat and so on. We're in a more hot tropical climate, so you know, the smaller they are, the easier it is to lose heat and that sort of thing. In, in more mm -hmm. colder climates or more varied temperatures, they could afford to be bigger, right? Mm -hmm. um, they could, they could um, retain heat better and that sort of thing. They need a fat to, to keep them warm. Correct, yeah, mm -hmm. so more bulk for exactly for the harsh, the harsh seasons that they go through. Whereas here, we only got rain and, rain and dry, right? Um, so that's one of the theories why you get mammals, especially that are smaller near near the equator, right? Okay. Yep. So South American um, pumas will be smaller than all. Larger. Larger. larger yeah. So, but uh, but isn't that closer to the equator? No, we're so we're closer. But as you move further on uh, on either side, if you go north or south, like if you go down to Brazil and Peru and so on, they're further away from the equator than we are. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so, You're for right, example, Ecuador is more or less where we're exactly, where, where. and then you go yeah, more uh, yeah, down. Yeah, I got it, I got yeah. it. Same applies to the jaguars. So, for example, I know we're not at the jags, but um, that's always a good average to use. Our guy, our jaguars in Belize, average at around maybe 125 to 150 pounds. In Brazil, in the Pantanal, in the Amazon, they've tagged uh, or radio colored jaguars that are well over 200, close to 300 pounds. So, again, double the size. Double the size, yeah. yeah. So, we go to our size, we could yeah, handle it. Uh huh. Exactly. We would be on this side closer. Mm -hmm. North America would be a bit farther. Correct. Yeah, because the equator really runs around Ecuador in exactly. that area there. I think. Yep, that's I right. I think I visited the area where they said um, they had some. I'm sure I visited the equator uh -huh. <laughs> in, in Ecuador. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So everything close there would be about our size, and then you yeah you get a variation when you leave. Uh -huh. But they're I mean they're just even the ones in Belize. Um, pumas, especially, are very accomplished hunters. They, they're the second largest wild cat we have, and they hunt almost the same things as jaguar. They will hunt okay. uh, deer, pikiri, um, gibnot, agouti, all, all sorts of different species. And we've seen in the wild where they share space with jaguar. Like you'll have a jaguar and a puma using the same territory, just at different times of day. And they okay. so they don't fight. Uh, not that we've seen, we, we can see them, and this is just from camera traps, like people put out cameras to monitor who's there, and uh -huh. you see like in the morning a jaguar walking up this trail, and in the evening the puma coming back down it. The same trail. <laughs> yeah, so they, they figure out how to share space. They coexist. Exactly, uh -huh. existence. Well, our puma has gone to hide. Yes. The Belize Zoo is packed with so many attractions and provides visitors with a unique experience. We will have much more after these words from our partners. The National Gas Company Limited was born of the need for the country of Belize to have a marine gas terminal of its own, thereby securing supplies of critical cooking gas for a growing population. As Belize's population grew, the time came for a modern marine gas terminal that ensured safety, security of supply, and the requisite infrastructure for industry-accepted quality assurance now demanded by the people of Belize. In 2020, the National Gas Company Limited became a reality. The National Gas Company Limited is a $60 million public-private partnership where Belize's private sector would design, finance, construct, and manage a state-of-the-art national marine terminal facility and two complementary storage depots away from the coast. After 15 years, the National Gas Company would be fully turned over to the country and people of Belize at no cost to the taxpayer. The National Gas Company of Belize, fueling Belize forward. We are the Barry, offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Belmapan, San Ignacio Cayo, Orgeot, and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita. The Barry. Get more, be less. Since 2008, the Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust has created opportunities for Belizeans to develop themselves and their communities. 
The Trust employs tools that are intuitive, collaborative, and accessible so that every Belizean is empowered to achieve their full potential. Over 200,000 Belizeans have been impacted because of our various initiatives. The Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust, empowering Belizeans of today to create the Belize of tomorrow. Shell V Power with three times more cleaning and friction reducing molecules. Go well, go Shell. So, um, where do we go now? Well, we can, so we've met the predator, we can go meet the prey. We can take you to meet some, some, um, uh, white lip peccary or what Belize are known as wari. Wari. Yeah. All right. So right next door is one of the food they would hunt in the wild, no? I guess that's why you must get more excited. Yeah. <laughs> So these are these are pecaries, right? Yes. But if if you're in the wild, and and, and one of these things chase you, you better run, right? That's right. Uh, <laughs> how how do you escape these in the wild? Because they, they will chase you, right? They will chase you in the wild. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if there is a thumb of rule to escape from them, but yeah, if they have a tree, a the tree. nearest one. They, can they climb trees? No, they can't. They yeah. can't. Yeah. Yeah, but they, they, they would chase you if you come across them in the wild. Yes, because you are in their territory. Uh -huh. um, you know, um, they are in large groups. Uh -huh. And normally led by one dominant male. Okay. Right? And how want to tell you it smell like peculiar? Because we are smelling that right now. How, how, how they smell. They have, their, they have that, this unique yeah. smell. And so right, sometimes right. people look at you in Creole and say, Wow, you smell like peculiar. Right. So this is what they're talking about, right? Right. So, so they, they have a musk gland in the back. Um, and it, re it releases uh, some oily stuff and it, it releases all that odor, no? Mm -hmm. um, that is to keep that group together. That's how they communicate mm -hmm. with the musk gland. Um, many a times you see them rub, you know, from rare to rare, and uh, they, they are actually the forehead and the rear. Mm -hmm. And um, that releases the scent. Mm -hmm. And that, that would keep the group together There's because they are social animals. Yeah. So and, so and so when we smell like Pikiri, you know. Uh, or wari. Or wari. Yeah. Yeah. But um, uh, when, when I tell you, you, your skin thick like wari skin. Man, nothing can go in there. Very tough. Yeah. It's very furry, as you could see. Yeah, but remember, we have two different species of, of, of Pikiri in Belize. We have the, this is the white lip Pikiri, oh, the one we call wari. Oh. And we have the colored Pikiri. Uh, we just call Pikiri, yeah. right? Both hunted. I mean, I think the wari has been uh, the one that has been extirpated more than the than the other species. Yeah. So he's considered to be an endangered species here. Mm -hmm. Are these fully grown? Um, the ones in the front are fully grown. Uh, the other ones are young ones, juveniles, just coming up. Um, they were rescued. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were rescued from from the pit. The pit pet trade, somebody found them, so we hand raise them. And I think I don't think you'll hand feed them though. No? Yes, I mean you will hand feed I, there, I you'll put your you'll put your hand there? No no but we have that you know I mean he's not like as gentle as a as a national animal is. No but you real. would be amazed that Picari Picaris are very intelligent animals as well. Uh -huh. And they would recognize you. Um, and many times people would use the other the other Picari as pets. Which we really discourage because they have very huge canines, you know. Mm -hmm. And one bite of a picari, it's not nice. Uh, they can transmit that mm -hmm. they can transmit uh, rabies, mm -hmm. you know. So they do have uh, zoonotic diseases on that. So, so, so that that rubbing the scent is what bring out that smell. Bring out the, sm the scent. Because you, 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 you smell the scent stronger. They rub yeah. the smell the scent like you just raise up. You want to give me some food, John? Because yeah. I'm sure that they. Some food. What are you cut this one? Let's take some. Um, so they knock the, 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 the tusks together. So oh, yeah. Together.
That's why they issue a, a challenge. Yeah, because that's what that knock had. Mm -hmm. What they knocked the, the top. So they ha yeah, they have, as Umberto mentioned, they do have uh, raised in incisors or the, where you could consider tusks, but they're inside the mouth like a, a wild boar, so it have, mm -hmm. and they they knock those together when they're oh. issuing a, like a challenge, so it's to to kind of pull their stance, right? Especially the, the big adults. Noise, yeah. I didn't mm -hmm. know it makes so much noise. So if they're having like a dispute in the group, they'll clack it very quickly against each other. They yeah. they bristle up their um their hairs. It's it's a really a really imposing sight, you see. Yeah. yeah. So you were asking earlier, Chief, what happened if you come across one? Mm -hmm. I, I heard I was your best thing to get out of the way. We've we you know people climb tree and climb top on our big rock just for move and let them pass because um, there, it's not that they they don't hunt. They, it's not like they go after animals to eat them. It's they're very defensive of their herd because they in turn are hunted by everything. Jaguars hunt them, puma hunt them, humans hunt them. So they're they stand their ground and they'll defend their their group with their life, no. So if they're coming through and you're in front of them, don't think that by making noise and so they no, will run. They, they won't. They will yeah. continue charging and, and charge right through you. Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah, we actually, and so this, as Umberto mentioned, this species is on the decline. It's it's rare now to find them in Belize in big numbers because they've been overhunted. Um, during the pandemic, we were on the zoos, um, the, the wildlands that the zoo manages and we were all doing some surveys with birds and we came across a, a small herd of white lip. First time we've had them in this area in about 10 years. Mm -hmm. And they were so busy, they were behind like a little forest block so they couldn't see us. We could see and smell them, but they were so occupied with what they were doing. They were hunting for like snuffling in the ground for food. We just quietly backed away and, and walked back out the way we came. So How large would be a herd of, of them? It varies. I mean, in their prime, like historically, you've heard, you can hear of, of hundreds of them being in one single herd. but. Yes. In Belize now, you know, a few dozen is, is something remarkable. I think the only places you really see big numbers anymore is like in the Chiqui Bull, um, in Rio Bravo, in the, in the well-managed protected areas, forested areas in Belize, you find bigger herds. Um, down in the Bladen, Bladen Nature Reserve too. Yeah, it's a little bit of dominance there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they themselves um, say, hey, I'm the boss here, you right. know? That's what, that's what they're doing with that one. That's right. Right. Yep. And, and then, then they the and then the smell just come up hard. Yes. The smell is the smell is how it rises. Mm -hmm. So they're there and they're reinforcing it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll have their own code now. Yes, right. Their own code. And this um the landscaping you see here, the, the keepers didn't do this is all they, they worry. They do their own landscaping. So they this used to be forested just like next to us. And over time everything. they root out everything. So they churn it up looking for food. They they're they're good at, at clearing a, a, a lot. <laughs> Aggressive. Yes. So so, um, so where are you taking me now? Well I'm taking you to see Sylvia, one of our jaguars. That Sylvia is a jaguar? Right. Okay. Yeah. Let's go and see Sylvia the Jaguar. Okay. Let's get to know Sylvia. So here we have Sylvia, she's one of the female jaguars that we have at the zoo and she is a graduate of the, um, the Human Jaguar Conflict Program the zoo's run since 2003, almost, almost 20 years. Um, these are jaguars that, we've, we've kind of touched on this earlier Chief, but these are jaguars that go into communities or are on near farms and start hunting domesticated and, and livestock animals. So they hunt dog, pig, sheep, cow. Sylvia, in her case, she came from Sylvester Village, which is in the north. Um, she was hunting dogs consistently in that village. And so the villagers obviously didn't want to harm her, but they also didn't want their dogs to keep going missing. So they called the zoo and forest department for assistance. And usually what we do is, so the zoo, we're an NGO, we, we're not a, a government entity. So forestry leads with doing an assessment of like a jaguar conflict in a community. And once they've done their assessment, if they confirm that the jaguar has to be removed, then the zoo comes and assists. No? So the team goes out, traps the animal humanely, brings them there to the zoo. And um, what Umberto just did is something that is done from the day they come in, they're hand fed, they get direct interaction with the animal care team, the, the zookeepers, so they build a bond with humans. Because these are animals we can't release back into the wild, right? Yeah. Sylvia has some messed up teeth, she has some broken canines. We get jaguar that have been shot. They come in with bad eye injury. They're old and got glaucoma or cataracts. And so you can't 
relocate them. They, the only place they can come is to a, a setting like the zoo where they're not going to be a, a, a hazard to people or to their um, livestock anymore. No? So the idea is to get them comfortable with people since they're going to be around people a very long time. And not all of them are like people. I mean, some of them, <laughs> some of them um, will just tolerate the zookeepers. But like Silva, you notice she responds to you. Yeah, she, responds. she doesn't mind strangers near her. So she'll be one of the representatives that comes out into the main part of the zoo to meet people. Look at those claws. Mm -hmm. Look at those claws. Yep. So Silvia, how much you weighs? How about about 60 pounds. 60, right? Yeah, so she, small jaguar, she right? is. So she is maybe like the runt of her litter. It, it, she's small even by by female jaguar standards, I believe. She should be a little bigger, but she's not. Um, the the males, like we mentioned before, can get over a hundred pounds, but the females are usually probably around eighty or ninety. They max out. But she's ferocious. She's intense. I feel like the female jaguars are always more intense than the males, mm -hmm. and you know they're just as good hunters as their counterparts. And it's amazing that no two of them have the same pattern. Correct. Exact, exact, no two of them have the same exactly. exact pattern. And that's, that's yeah. really useful when you're doing an assessment for a problem jaguar because you don't want to catch the wrong animal. Mm -hmm. The reality is you could have a jaguar living in a, or near a community that never caused trouble. We've, we've seen this with camera traps where people will get a dog and no, no, no fence. The dog never go missing, but you clearly see on camera a jaguar passing through on a trail and he doesn't disturb anybody. So the researchers can study the pattern on the flanks of the animal, if they get both sides, they could put two cameras on a trail and figure out if there's one or two or more jaguars using an area and who the one is that's coming into the, the, the farm or the community and hunting. So when you set a trap, you know, you could ref refer to the photos and ensure, yes, this is, this is the one that we were looking for, right? So you don't take out the wrong animal. I can remember once coming here and there was a little hut that you'd get in mm -hmm. and the jaguar would go on top. Um, you, you still do that, that, that sort of thing? Yes, we do. That's with um, Lindo. So when you came, that was uh, the, 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 the one jaguar we started out with was Junior Buddy. Junior Buddy. So he was the one, Buddy, yes, yeah. he, um, he had the storybooks written about him. Yeah. We used to have a big birthday party for him like we did for yeah. April. So Junior passed a few years ago, but Lindo um, has taken over as the, the interactive, the, the one that does the jaguar experience now. That's not in here, right? No, that's on the, the around the corner, on the other side of the Jaguar enclosures. We do the um the Lindo Link. Do we do we do that? Do we see it? I think yeah. yeah I think we can, can set that up. Yeah, well, let's let's put Chris inside and <laughs> since he likes cats. Yeah. He likes cats. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember doing the experience with Sharon with the last junior. time I was there with Junior Body. Right. Right. That was exciting enough. But I yeah. thought I said I won't do this ever again. So. No, here am I doing it in home memory. The thing is that Junior was born or junior came to us very very young so we and raised junior the zookeepers they fed junior wrong the clock 24 hours a day so he 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 was imprinted now lindo came to us as an adult wild cat okay, tell me junior make a more sense than lindo have I, I i don't want to say that but it may easier i think we may trust the man more uh -huh. <laughs> so we're going in there with something where we, we're not trust or Come on, we, we trust the man. Okay. We trust her. Uh. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. So I want to introduce, I want to introduce Herson. Herson. Herson, the one of the jaguar keeper them here at the zoo. So Herson, how long have you been keeping jaguars here at the zoo? I've been here at the zoo for seven years, uh -huh. and been working mostly with the with the cats. And Lindo is one of the jaguars I work with every day. Yeah. So how how safe is Lindo when we go in there? He is very used to people, and like um, Celso said, we're gonna lock him up, and we're gonna go inside. There is a joke: if if you see me running, then you run too. But that's just a joke. <laughs> no, but it's very safe to go inside. But you can't run left hand jaguar, right? Oh no, not not, no not, not not no way. Yeah, so I might as well just turn up there and tell him, "Hey, guy, you have your way." You know? Yeah. Then he might change his mind, right? So. So Chief, you, you asked about if it's safe. Yeah, we have, uh -huh. we have um, steps to go about, you know, doing this experience. Mm -hmm. um, here you have to get him with the food, so that is one positive thing. Then we lock him up, we secure the gates. That's one of the main things. We have to ensure that the gates sure. are secure before you step into the, into the Jaguar territory. Yeah. The next step would be release him. Uh -huh. While you guys are in there secure, okay. so everything is with you know going by step. 
um, and with food. And I don't come out of that cage unless you said come out, say right. come out, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's let's let's, let's try it then. Let's see see what happens. You, so you see if Red Wing. Yes, I'm going right. to lock him up okay. first, and then okay. you guys right. give me a minute. All right. Right. When, in a safety cage. We're inside a safety cage, right. inside of Lindo's caged area. Right. And so Lindo will be appearing in a few. He's coming right now. Right. But the fuck, he's coming. Where is he? Yeah. Oh, he Lindo. He strolls before he gets here. Oh, he takes his own time. He takes his own time. Right. Oh, here's Lindo. OK. Here's Lindo. Lindo. Hi, Lindo. Hey, Lindo. So he wants to look at him first and see how big he is. And then we tell him to roll over. Okay. Roll over and give me, come on, one more time. Roll over, roll over. Lin, Lin, Linda is a friendly jack woman. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't want to be out there with him though, to find out. No. no. So Stelso mentioned about the human jaguar conflict program. Mm -hmm. So Linda was one of the, the jaguars that, that came that way. Um, and with a lot of work, a lot of training, this is how far we have reached. You have done a lot, right. a, a lot big with him. Right, because it's it, it comes from the wild state, and they have okay. a different behavior than than you could that, see that, now. That body. Right. In the body. So, yes. Right. So maybe you need to come on. Roll. 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 Roll for the chief. Good. All right. Right. Pass up. This is a good experience, really. Right. And, uh, All right. So as well as their um, terrestrial, they're arboreal as well. Uh, they can, can climb okay. all the way here. You know. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, chief, you could touch his belly, scratch your belly once. I could scratch your belly. Once he's settled in with some food, you uh -huh. want to stand up a little bit? Okay. Let me. Yeah. Once he sits, because he got to sit down. Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay, there you go. And you could touch your paws, you could but feel it. Hold on. Wait, hold on. Uh, uh, there you go. Okay. Like that. Uh, right. Yeah. So when yeah. he eats, you could touch okay. his paws. Okay. I'm going to touch his paws, so okay. I think it's fun better. Yeah, yeah for sure. Good. Hey, guy. All right, touch your paws, the chief. Okay. okay. You don't mind that. Good digestion, you know. This is a good experience, a wonderful experience. It is a wonderful experience, and I think it would be good if more Belizeans would have this experience seeing a jaguar so close, you know? I mean, you, know, you almost feel like you could touch your head. So, to get him away from here, to get him away from here, you know, he, he knows somebody else came with, with food. Right, so he, so he, moves he, away. Knows, he knows the keeper who works with him. Okay. But he gets rewarded for what he's doing. Oh, so he... Right, he's, when he gets in there, he's going to get rewarded again. Okay, so that's what he's looking for. Right, so what we do is... Okay, see? See, he's going to leave right there. So every time he does something, we compensate him with something. Um, and that's how, it, how, that's how it works. That's how it really works. That's, that's where he went in. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is what we call a holding area or a management area. Um, but it's built for hurricane... Um, if we have in the yeah, event of a hurricane, so it's a, it's a hurricane shelter. shelter. Right, yes. Okay. So we don't have any jaguars running around. Mm -hmm. We put them up in after the end, as a secure, area. As a secure area, yes. Right. Can you mind? Yes. So we're safe now, sir? Yes, sir. He whispered he whisper to the jaguar. It's, it's, it's. He got a lead jaguar sold. <laughs> yeah, right. Watch, watch your head. Yeah, it, 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 it was an amazing experience, really. It's a good experience. It's a good experience. A bit different from Junior, because Junior used to do... Junior used to do more antics, I think, no? He used to do a 
kiss on your forehead. Yes, uh -huh. I think I remember that. It's a bit different with him. No. But it's still good because you get really close yeah, to a jaguar. You get close now. Let's see if I, we, we do it, right? Okay, so we're going to see his bunker. Management. His management area. This is his management area. So this is where he went in. That's where he spends the night as well, weatherproof. Oh, he spent the night in there? That's where our jaguar spend the night, yes. Uh, it's a weatherproof management area for hurricanes. And they are trained to come in uh, in the evening and spend the night in there. And then in the morning, we just release them back again wow. after checking, make sure all the electrics are working before we let them out. So there he is. And on this side, uh, we, we have the slide door that we just pull a cable over here. Oh, let him out now. Let him out. Yeah, over there we have a safety, safety on the slide door, a pin. And then there is a cable, and it pulls up the, the drop door, and he comes out. Then he goes to find his treats on the logs. Okay. Okay, let's go back to where we were. Uh, these are... Uh, on, our, on our way to, to, to the other uh, Jaguar spot, uh, this, these are what? These are the uh, Coatimundi, or what Belizeans know as Quash. Quash? Yes, they're, um, they're in the same family as raccoons. So they're, they're cousins or relatives of the raccoon. And you find them, you usually find them in forested areas, or even <laughs> sometimes they've popped up in um, orchards or, or, or um, other agricultural areas that are near forest. They go I'm looking for food, no? And they go with chickens too? They, they're, they can, so they're, they're technically um, carnivores, but their diet is more varied. They eat a lot of fruit and smaller animals, or even like insects and grubs in the soil. That's why you see it's all dug up. Uh -huh. So we give them mostly fruits. We sometimes give them eggs and so on for protein, but they prefer fruit for the most part. Um, they're, they're much more fruit oriented, or herbivore oriented than, than carnivore. carnivore. Yeah. And they're like, kind of like raccoons. They're opportunistic, right? They scavenge. They'll take what they can find. Mm -hmm. Quash. Quash. Yeah. Okay. Okay, quashes. <laughs> so, so, you brought me to the bush dog. Yes, Chief. This, this is the Tyra or the bush dog, as we commonly know. Um, cabeza de viejo. Yes. If, if you just check out the head, no? Um, the, uh, the, this is the same little dog I see them where the guys uh, latch onto the guy's shoes. You know, and the guy keeps saying, ah, oh, yeah, 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 forget what the name of the movie. Oh, um, the guard must be crazy. Is, is that it? Yeah. No, 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 is, the, the is that the family. same animal? The same family. But it looks like him because that, 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 there's a bush dog in there, and the other bush dog, you know? Yeah, so these... But tell me about this one. So this one, if you, so one of the things we, we focus on, as I said to you earlier, is, is all the animal health. So if you, if you look at him, he has uh, one eye. Okay. And so he, one, the other eye was surgically removed. He had a, a tumor growing on it, mm -hmm. you know, and the vets came down and they, they did a um, surgical procedure on him, removed the eye, and he's living healthy. Um, in the wild, he definitely may don't die yeah. already, you know. So, For sure. Um, so, again, you know, we stress a lot on the health of the animals we have in our collection. So this guy, uh, he, he, he actually eat. A lot of meat. Yeah, you enjoy yourself. Man. Yeah, eat birds, eat lizards. Uh, they're actually good hunters, um, almost to the point that they are like. Um, he swims. They swim. That's 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 a good question. I I haven't heard. I haven't read anything about their swimming. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, they are. They're really they're like in the weasel family. Uh-huh. That right. would be, yeah. Yeah, so, would yeah, like yeah. so uh, another one we have that mm -hmm. sometimes people confuse about is, is the Grison. Mm -hmm. So, but we, we only have the, the Tyra or, or the Bush Dog here at the Belize Zoo. We, we don't have any Grison, but they look more or less the same. The color different. Well, those but can be found in our country Yes, as well. yes, we have the Grisons here in Belize. Um, see a sleek body. Um, I'd see a uh, weasel-like. Look. Okay. The day was a bit tiring, but well worth it. 
Belizeans are encouraged to stop by and enjoy the best little zoo in the world. We will wrap up our visit after this break. <laughs> The National Gas Company Limited was born of the need for the country of Belize to have a marine gas terminal of its own, thereby securing supplies of critical cooking gas for a growing population. As Belize's population grew, the time came for a modern marine gas terminal that ensured safety, security of supply, and a requisite infrastructure for industry-accepted quality assurance now demanded by the people of Belize. In 2020, the National Gas Company Limited became a reality. The National Gas Company Limited is a $60 million public-private partnership where Belize's private sector would design, finance, construct and manage a state-of-the-art national marine terminal facility and two complementary storage depots away from the coast. After 15 years, the National Gas Company would be fully turned over to the country and people of Belize at no cost to the taxpayer. The National Gas Company of Belize, fueling Belize forward. We are the Barry, offering you great products, good service, and of course, the lowest prices in the entire country. Visit us in Belize City, Bermapan, San Ignacio Cayo, Orndrag, and now in San Pedro, La Isla Bonita. The Barry. Get more? Pieles. Since 2008, the Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust has created opportunities for Belizeans to develop themselves and their communities. The trust employs tools that are intuitive, collaborative, and accessible so that every Belizean is empowered to achieve their full potential. Over 200,000 Belizeans have been impacted because of our various initiatives. The Belize Natural Energy Charitable Trust, empowering Belizeans of today to create the Belize of tomorrow. Shell V Power with three times more cleaning and friction reducing molecules. Go well, go Shell. It don't matter what part of the jewel they come from. All right, so where are you taking me now? So we're going to see, we're staying at the wetlands and we're going to see the crocodiles. Let's go and see the crocs. <laughs> so so we're, we're, we're looking at the Morlet uh, crocodile. Um, this is more the freshwater species, a crocodile. Okay. Uh, and so you'll find it more in, in, in the rivers and the lagoons, the freshwater lagoon here in Belize. Um, the the, American, the sal American saltwater crocodile is much larger and we'll see that over in the other exhibit. If you have water in your backyard, a Morlet crocodile might very well be in there as well, right? Well, we find, remember the freshwater pond uh -huh. that we have over there that occasionally we get one just come down with the rains in the flood water and he inhabit there and when, when another rain, another flood come, he go. Yeah. So yes, so they do. They move, right? They move, they move around, right? <coughs> Sorry. Yes, they do move around. Um, and sometimes they just move with the current, with the, with the flood that is occurring. Yeah, they, be they, they, do, they, they will lay eggs in, the, in, in those ponds uh, because, you know, everywhere you go in Belize, you see crocodiles, <laughs> you know? Anywhere there's water, there are crocodiles. Yeah, the, the population of crocodiles in Belize seem to be rebounding. A um, uh, lot of protection, a lot of education and awareness have happened over the years, and so crocodiles uh, the population seem to rebounding and every, everywhere one of the challenge we have is the human wildlife conflict so crocodile this time we talk about jaguar now we also have crocodile uh, crocodile showing up in people backyard especially the areas we have uh, canals or canal you know so you see a crocodile in your backyard by, by the canal and then you start to feed it and after a while the, the crocodile become habituated 
and they start to associate you with food and, and they start to wait for you to feed it and then it become a problem. Then you become the food when you show up without the food. Well, if, if not you, your dog or, or your pet or something like that, no? So it's... So it's our advice here would be don't feed, don't feed crocodiles. Do not feed the crocodiles. That is definitely the, the advice. Uh, the number one advice is to leave them to be wild. Don't feed them. Don't supplement them with food. I mean, if, if you see a crocodile in distress, well, that is something else. You need to notify the authorities um, and they will look after it. But don't provide food for it. They have the saying in Belize that if you are chased by a crocodile, you don't run straight, you run, you run zigzag because he can, he can zigzag. <laughs> you, you heard that, that story? No, I, I haven't heard that story. Um, a crocodile, uh, they can dash, they can dash at you very fast, but I don't think they can sustain that speed. Um, and so you, you could, you could probably outrun a crocodile. Now, when you meet her in a water, that's something else. Uh -huh. He's the king of the water. Yeah. Right. This one is very silent, or he's having a siesta. Well, if you see, he got the mouth open, so he the bask. Uh, that that the, that the behavior we call it right now, he the bask, he the basking at the sun, so he the sun bait basically. And um, what it's doing, it's regulating the temperature, basically. That is what it's doing there. What makes this different from the American crocodile? The mullet, what's the difference in the mullet and the American crocodile? Um, so the, the one would be the, the shape of the mouth. Uh -huh. This one is more pointed. No, this one is more round. Uh -huh. This one is more round. Um, the American is more pointed. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. So we, we right now we are say hopefully Let's we are say Brutus and Brutus. Well, the name Brutus and yes. the one we're going to see the name Brutus. Yes. Yes. Uh, two Brutus. Yeah. And this one and name Nelson. I, I, I like the writing here. It says, "Look at me and smile. I'm your Morlet Croc. Fish and birds, that's to eat. Throw in some bugs, that's a treat." We crocs are a cool creation. Be proud that Morlets live in your nation. Okay, that, that's all like Cheryl. Yes, def definitely. Yeah. Um, um, you know, that, that's a nice way of talking to the guests, you know. Yeah. Use, use the first person as the croc. Yes. Morlets crocodile, Crocodilus moreliti, alligator. So that, that is Brutus. Yes, Chief, this is Brutus, the American crocodile, and this guy is a big brute. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's what you call him Brutus? <laughs> no, no, he came here, um, I, I actually, I met Brutus here. <laughs> okay. So Brutus has been here for a while. Um, Brutus Acutus, that's Acutus is the, um, from Belize City. Oh, yeah? This was a rescue um, crocodile from Belize City? Right, according to Umberto, this, this is one that was rescued from Belize City area. I would say just removed from, from being a, a human crocodile conflict, no? Yeah. Have, they had, um, have you had crocodiles um, being um, born here in the zoo? Back in the days, we had um, Kusa Yelobo, Cassava. Uh -huh. Got that. Well, my goodness. You that, Chris? Let's. Hold on, Christian. I'm feeling again right now. What's Brutus, man? Brutus no use, eh? About 12 feet, right, Bert? Huh? About 12 feet? Yeah, 12 feet. 12 yeah, so, feet. So Brutus is about 12 feet long. 300 pounds. So, you know, it took, it took the zookeepers a while, but they, they um, I mean, always you need to know the weight of the animals. So how to, would you to administer. Are like Brutus? To administer medicine or anything like that, no, because they get sick too. Um, after all, then they're in a captivity, they're not in a, their natural um, elements. But how would you wear, how would you wear a Brutus like that? So what what the keepers did is they devised so they, they, they we have a scale that we wear big animals on, and they devise a, a cage, a net like like a board. 
and they put food and, and lure Brutus onto that board and eventually the man get a full body on this on the board and then the board is on the scale oh, okay. and that is how we were able to get his full weight. That's a trick Brutus, huh? Right, right. Again, uh, they're that, that just modifying their behavior and also to, to training them, teaching them and rewarding them when they do what you want they do. Mm -hmm. So how often do you feed, how often do you feed Brutus? So, so he's, he's fed once a week. Um, in the wild, they don't eat every day. They don't eat every week. I mean, when they get a good meal, they have to digest that for a while. And, and, and so they can go months without eating. Serious? Yeah. So Brutus could eat once a week and, and look at and get as big as that? Yeah, correct. But because you don't have to, you don't need to go and hunt and use that energy to, to hunt. You know, that's why he has, um, that's why we schedule, you know, once a week, twice a week, we would pass by and feed him. Yeah. You'll find Brutus over that side, the, the basking of the sun as well, you know, just regulating the temperature okay. over that side where it's dry. When you talk about regulating temperature, what, what, what's the process that they go through doing that? Well, remember over there we saw the, the, uh, the morelets sitting in the sun, opening a mouth and not moving any at all. So they, they, don't, um, they don't regulate their own temperature. They have to, their temperature is, it goes with, with the environment. So come out in the sun, bask in the sun and, and heat up the body. Basically, that's the way they do it. We have a field to cool and just come out and... Right, so in, in a Lehman storm, basically, that's the way they do no? I mean. Of the water, come up right, come and, and bask in the sun. Come and bask in the sun, and you'll find that the reptiles they do that, right? So mm -hmm. they they just try and bring their body temperature to the temperature of the environment they're in. Because reptiles normally are cold blooded animals. That is correct. Right? That is because correct. they're cold blooded, they, they take the heat and right. regulate themselves, like you were saying. We're going to see the harpy eagle now. The harpy eagle, uh, yeah. that's a symbol of Galen University, the harpy eagle. That is right. Um, Gal Galen University has adopted the eagle over the years, and so they are one of the one of the sponsors for the harpy eagle here at the Belize Zoo. Oh, that's excellent. Okay. So we are at the harpy eagles exhibit, right? And there's a harpy eagle. It's a big eagle, you know. And um, harpy eagle is really the symbol of Gillen University, right? That's right, that's right, and they're very proud. Yes, of course, of yeah. course. Um, so this is, the queen is one of the harpy eagles that was brought from Panama okay. for the reintroduction program. But you uh, can find them in Belize as well, of right? Of course, of course, but very rare you will see them. The, the, their preference would be really in the, in the high canopies, um, you know, in the Chiquibul forest, the Bladen Reserve. Okay. Um, but yeah, the queen was one of the one of the birds that was brought for uh, release here in Belize, um, but because of her behavior, you know, they used to return back to the to the base, to the researchers' base. They all decided to remove her from the program and bring her here to the zoo to make her an, an ambassador harpy. Uh -huh. So um, her name her name is the queen. It's one of the, the queen. The queen. The queen. Yeah. Largest birds, uh, eagles actually. In in, in uh, can you bring the, can you bring the queen closer to us? Well, that's I'm trying to do that. Yeah, trying to. We have we have Panama, who's oh, my Panama. very okay, very so close Panama. friend. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the queen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, we have um, we can meet Panama here. Okay. Yeah, the Panama. Where's where, where the queen? Uh, Panama. So Panama okay. is the male. The okay. queen is the female. So we have a pair. Okay. So this is a male harpy eagle. Harpy eagle. So in in raptors, the majority of the times the, the males are smaller, females are larger. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, the, the female is much larger. You could see. Yeah, yeah. that's a much larger much boy. Larger. The female is much larger. Panama. 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 Anything, anything, anything about it. Come on. 
Come on. Dar. Wow. Panama, you know, easy. Yeah. Ooh. Look at Panama. Look at the crest. Yeah. You know, and the size of the talons wow. are compared to the size of a grizzly bear uh -huh. claws. Here, Panama. You gotta see it sideways, no? Where do you see front way? Front way, so you see front way. Is there too much people? Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Panama. So this was one uh, Sharon's bodies. Uh -huh. And um yep. They're dropping it, Panama. Dropping what's it. going on? Uh, what's going on? Maybe not the favorite piece, but make we try this. This is chicken liver. <coughs> Come on. Come on, Panama. Yeah, it's probably not, and not too hungry, but um, yeah. <laughs> not tasty. Not tasty good yeah, for you. Not tasty good for Anthony. What are you going to do? One of the their natural prey would be, you know, agoutis, their birds, other different species of birds. Uh -huh, what's happening? Uh, what's happening? Talk yeah. to me. Uh-huh. Okay. So what you're saying? Huh? I guess he um he likes the family rat, because that's one of their favorite food. Oh, they like rats? They like rats. Yeah. Big rats. Oh. Yeah. So they Yeah. That's the best of the food. Rob, you're not hungry? Yeah. You don't eat already now. Come, come, come here, come here. What's happening? I think you only got one more stuff after this. Uh, I think so. Here we go, Panama. Yeah, we're yeah. the There, finally, I guess. You get that piece on there. Uh huh. I think she's just, you know. About this this is what everybody yeah. says. A lot of people are. A Chrissy Lakeman. Normally we would come and feed, you know. Um, so we spend time with Panama. What's going All right. on? All right. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, so, oh, nice. so so Panama is, you know, has been here for 19 years. And Sharon, again, used to celebrate the birds and birthday, you know, yeah. the animals. And Panama was one of the birds that, you know, annually there was a celebration. Ah. One more piece. So, Chief, one of the things that we do here, as Celso was saying, we're very, very... Um, committed to animal health and all that. And when we come to birds of prey, especially this size here, we um, we're very, very careful how to restrain this bird. Yeah. Right? Um, uh, because because the of the talons. talons because uh, of I was the about talons. to ta ask about the talons. Right. The ta those talons are not easy, man. Not easy. They're made to, you know, to to get something, you know, kill it at one at one point. One, one you know, point, yeah. yeah. Um, so we have to restrain him, do any physical exam and all that. And so we've been, we've been doing, we, we have been doing... How do you skip the talents? Right, so we have been doing physical exams every year, um, checking the beak, uh, checking the eyes, see how the blood looks. Um, we have to take two guys to hold him down. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> we ensure that we hold those talons really firm, you know, and somebody else will be doing the check well we have somebody holding those two talons there those wow. two foot yeah we wrap him up in a burrito style <laughs> <laughs> basically yeah. yeah so because once their their eyes are you know closed they, they're not seeing anybody they remain calm yeah yeah but that is the main weapon there we we're concerned of yeah uh -huh. okay oh, yes. all right the queen Queen Wallace. So what, so what
So the, what, the, what the tarp is doing is she's gathering twigs around and branches. Um, I think she's getting ready to 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 um, to, 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 have one? to to lay egg. To yeah. lay eggs. Yeah. Okay. However, we haven't reached to you know to that decision to to, to breed harpies yet. Um, okay. So if if she will lay eggs, what will happen then? Uh, it could be. She's it's a fertile. There's no there's no male with with her. Okay. So yeah. just lay eggs. Just, just lay eggs. eggs. Yeah. Just lay eggs. Okay. So the, these two don't mate. They don't mate. But that's what she's doing right now. She's showing nesting behavior. Okay. Yeah. So this is the other type of cat. Yes. This is the the, the, the fifth the species of species, cat. Yes. The what do you call it? Jaguarunde. Jaguarunde, or locally known as the halare. Oh, uh huh. Yeah. So when they say you, you sound like halare. Mm -hmm. So when they say you sound like halare, they say just, you're, you're just talking. Just the, like the, the snarling, you know. Um, the, the, the noise it makes, that's, that's basically it, no? What would cause them to make the noise? Right? Because they're very some, silent right now. Yeah, some discomfort, something that disturb them. Mm -hmm. um, just like any ordinary cat, they will hiss, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but they are distinct uh, color from, from the rest of the cats that we have. So this is, uh, the, this is the, all of them are the same color? Um, no, they have in two different variations. Um, I've seen a different a different coloration of a jagarundi, um, but um, yeah, they have the other one, same same color. Yeah, yeah. The one in there, yeah. yeah, in the back. It's a, it's a more brown. More brown, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. More brown. Right. So when I tell you, it's not like halari. It's just. Yeah, it's, yeah, nice. it's it's uh, this cat they're talking about. Yeah, some people. Say, there you go. Uh, I mean that that is just a play, a playful behavior. This. Nothing wrong going on there. These two are rescued as as cubs, uh -huh. uh, and so we have the we had the opportunity to hand rear the the jaguarundis. Again, you we can't really domesticate a jaguarundi, but you know they get used to people around. Why did they name jaguarundi? Ah, that's a very good question. A very good question. I, it, it doesn't really look like a jaguar, even no. though it's a cat, yeah. similar cat, but but it doesn't have the spots like the jaguar. Yeah. Um, uh, jaguar rundi. Yeah, you know. That's a really very good question. That you know, I, I'm not sure how it how that name came about. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they're found in all over Belize, right? Yeah, actually, yeah, they are. They're found in in, in the Central Corridor as well. Um, very secretive cats. Okay. We don't see them very much. Um, some people would refer to them as otter cats. They look like the otter, remember the, yeah, the, 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 the yeah. water dog. Almost looks like that. Or weasel cat, they would call them. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So that is how we get our, our jaguarundis here, by rescuing, you know, orphans. Um, we have also, at one point, we, we bred Jagarundi, so these okay. are the offsprings on the side here. No offsprings in there? Yeah, so, okay. but we shouldn't, but it just happened and yeah. we had to, you know, get some control over it. So, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So the Aunt Ita. Yeah. So, so, so this is the Aunt Ita. Yes, Chief. This, this is actually one of the newer residents at the zoo. Uh, most people will remember the Aunt Ita um, at the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Uh, for we work still continue with rescuing animals. So this um, this Aunt Ita was 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 an orphan, and so brought here. And again, around the clock, the zookeepers work to keep him alive. And uh, uh, we were successful. Um, and so this is the home we we have uh, put together for for him. I get the impression listening to, to you and introducing me to all these animals that the zoo does not necessarily go out and capture animals in the wild, but rather take the rescued animals and bring them back to their natural habitat and show, show us what, they're, they're, what they are all about. That is correct. We not actively seek uh, animals to host at the zoo. And that's one of the questions a lot of Belizeans um, like to ask. So, which animal will you know, get next? You know, and and it, it doesn't work like that. So, 
over the years, we've also released a lot of animals. You know, if the veterinarian they say, hey, this animal releasable, then we release it. Animal like, like this and eat, uh, um, because find a baby, like, like, how old was he when we got him in Berta? No more than two weeks old. So he became very imprinted on the zookeeping staff and rely on us heavily for food. And so naturally we can't release him back into the wild because he wouldn't be able to, the earlier years, the earlier days, the earlier time he had when he should have made learn how to hunt and stuff like that, we were providing food for it. So it can be released into the wild. Some, some, some animals, they come to us, they stay behind the scenes. Once they get better, we release them. They're gone. So not every animal that come to the zoo stay at the zoo. And that is something we need to highlight. But right, so once my animal can't make it back into the wild, then we take, we the take that brand. animal as an educational ambassador animal mm -hmm. and, and have that animal talk to the guests who are coming, you know, exactly what they're doing here, why they're here, and why is it important to protect them in the wild. Yeah, but it's not like if you go out into the wild and say, okay, I need a, I need a howler monkey, so let me go and take one from out of the baboon yeah. sanctuary or something. You don't, you don't do that type of thing, and I think that, that, that is what we need to clarify uh, here, that you have rescued monkeys, you have rescued them, different species of animals that we have seen here today, but, the, the, uh, 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 but you don't really go and hunt them in the wild in order to bring them to the zoo. Nor do we buy them. And you don't buy them either? Yes, occasionally you will get someone who call and say, I got a little tiger, uh, how much you know to pay for it? Uh, and we don't do that, we discourage that. Uh, we try our best to, to have them bring it in and let them know that uh, we cut and deal with them. Bring the animal to us, we won't report you to the forest department. We then report that animal to the forest department that we receive it, yeah. right? Because we, we don't want to create enemy with the public, you know, because, I mean, trust is important, especially in wildlife conservation. When, when you're developing your programs, you want to make sure that, that, that the public you're serving really buy into your program. So um, in, in this case, w w that is how we normally do it, you know. Br bring the animal. We don't want to bite fire. Right? But we'll take care of it. We'll take care of it. And nourish it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct, correct. And sometimes we get people who bring animals and they say, well, I, w I don't want to come back and see how you later, or see how they do. And that is fine. You know, we, once the animal is releasable, we let them know that, listen, the animal now has stay here. We have to make it go. You know, uh, and if it stays here, then you can come and see it. And, and we allow that because we encourage it. We want appreciation for the wildlife in Belize. I mean, that's the important side that needs to be come out, to come out of the zoo. It's a unique zoo in that all the animals are here because they need to be here, right? They need to be here or else they will not be surviving. They'll, they survive because they're here, but you don't go to where they live naturally and extract them from their natural habitat and bring them to live here, um, right? Which is this, I, that, to me, that is, that, is, that is very important. That, I think that's also one of the reasons to the, the, to the, to the zoo's success the reason why we exist this is this is not about making money you know one of, one of the perception was that Sharon was was rich no. Sharon was making a lot of money from the zoo but honestly all the money that the zoo make go right back into the conservation that work that we're doing and so if, if you try get into this to make money if you try start one zoo or one life one wildlife, sorry, you won't make it because this is not about money making. This this is a passion for us. You know, I mean, Umberto has dedicated 30 years at the zoo caring for animal. I into my 27th year, you know, Jamal going into his 13th. This, this, this is a labor of passion, basically, that we're doing here. And passion, of course, is love, right? <laughs> passion is love. So all that passion, like we are saying, is, 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 is love because passion is something that, that's born from, from within. Passion is something we carry in us for what we do. We love what we do. So Umberto and Celso, thank you so much. I know Jamal had to leave, um, but before we leave, um, because I know we have not seen everything, let me just tell folks that we have not seen everything. Eh? There's much more to see here than what we have shown you. Make sure you take the opportunity to visit the number one zoo in the world because I, I, hey, this is the most beautiful country in the world and so it's by nature it has the most beautiful zoo in the world. <laughs> right. So, um, let's hear from you, Umberto. Um, right. Umberto for so, Chief, thanks for coming and, and, and taking your time and your team coming out here to see the best little zoo in the world. I mean, as, as you said, it's passion have us out here 
um, and we will continue, we are reassured that we will continue doing our best to take care of our wildlife. Yeah. And so, so thank you so much um, for facilitating all this. Hey Chief, it, it, it's a pleasure. Um, we, we, we are tasked with, with, with a big job, you know. Sharon started something for us here in Belize and our job is to see that her legacy live on. Uh, we appreciate Love FM coming out, spending the day with us to share what, what Sharon built and left for Belizeans. Um, now our job, as I said, is to see this move forward. Mm -hmm. And one of the best way is by educating the public, making them aware of what we're doing. And you're using your, your, your media station as the vehicle for that. And we appreciate that the, the support the support you're giving to us is is immense. Um, the zoo is for Belizeans. Uh, this 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 has no owner. This is owned by the people of Belize. Um, we we are only the the driving force behind it. And so, I appreciate Miss Ava. I appreciate Christy Kamaraman coming out and, and just documenting what we have to share, what we have to offer to the Belizean public. Um, thanks so much for coming out, and we look forward to having you again. As as we show you what really go on behind the scenes at the I zoo, want because to see that behind the scenes we're going to do a third show, right? Right. Behind the scenes of the Belize Zoo. That is correct, Chief, because there's a lot more that go on behind the scene that that you see. I mean, the zookeepers preparing food, the vets working with the animals. It, it's just too much for us to do in one or two days. Yeah. But I've certainly enjoyed my, my visit here so far. I'm looking forward to coming back, like we're, like, like we're saying, right? And you know, we dedicated this uh, show or these shows to Sharon, to the memory of Sharon Matola. And um, she, was, she loved Belize. She loved the animals of Belize. You know, she loved her people. And so, you know, it's all about love, right? Yes, it's all about love, Chief. Right. right. When we love what we do, they say you don't work a day in your life and you, because you're doing it from the bottom of the heart. It's, it, it's one of the challenges my family have, like, like well, you could eat at the zoo all day, what do they do? I mean, it doesn't feel like work, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's a passion, like I said earlier. Well, it's like me holding this microphone, it doesn't feel like work, right? <laughs> I mean, it's all about love, right? <laughs> and yeah. so when we choose to love, we usually say one thing at our company, right? And that is, Belize and beyond, thanks for choosing love. You, you hear that all the time, right? All the time. You, want, you want to say it? Belize and beyond, thanks for choosing love. Right. Thank you, guys. All the best, man. All right. Belize Watch. Knowledge of the past. Impacting the present. Building the future. Celebration time. It don't matter what part of the jewelry you come from. You are you and me are me. But guess what?